so great it has been done. SpaceX has completed all the static fire tests on Flight 4 Starship hardware faster than we expected. So will the May flight also take place soon? Oh, no, let me bring you back down to Earth because the FAA will prevent it occur. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Just over three weeks after the third flight of its massive Starship rocket, SpaceX is making progress toward a fourth attempt. On April 5 at 4.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time in South Texas, the company performed a static fire test of the Starship Flight 4's next hardware, which bears the serial number Booster 11. The test of 33 Raptor engines appeared to be nominal as the Raptors ignited for about six or seven seconds. Meanwhile, its predecessor, Booster 10, experienced the 10-second static fire test. It can be said that the Starship team is doing their job better and better. Hey, let's listen carefully to this sound. That sweet, beautiful roar, right? Nothing like it in this world. In the video, we can see the cloud that makes some cool shadows from the booster. Staying far away, we also see a massive of dust released from beneath OLM. The rocket and ground support equipment looked undamaged after the test. Yeah, more data for SpaceX. The success of the test gave SpaceX and Elon Musk more confidence in gearing up for the May flight test. After the test, Elon Musk tweeted that hell on Earth, referring to the insane power of 33 Raptor engines. However, while making this report, we did not see any new update from SpaceX about what happened with the test. Hopefully, by the time you watch this video, that information will be published. The test of B-11 follows the static fire test of Ship 29 in March. On March 27, SpaceX lit a single Raptor engine of Ship 29, this time fueling the powerful rocket motor using the header tank located near the top of the spacecraft. This follows a similar path SpaceX took with Ship 28. When the company completed that test, they said it was to simulate the de-orbit burn of the spacecraft even though with current test flight trajectories, the rocket is suborbital. A few days ago, we witnessed a successful static fire on Ship 29's full engines. Based on the gathered data, Ship 29 is now rolled out from Mega Bay to High Bay to make room for Ship 30 to be onto the new engine installation stand in Mega Bay. The test of booster also demonstrates that OLM is fully ready for Flight 4. This is a result of the previous repair efforts on this hardware. Several hours after the March test, the cleanup efforts were already in full swing, with workers getting the launch pad back to its original state. The launch of Starship left some tiny damages on components like booster QD fuel hoses and the protection wall. In March, the booster quick disconnect hood was removed revealing the damage to the propellant lines underneath, requiring the urgent replacement. This part serves to protect the propellant feed lines from the elements. In short so far, SpaceX has come much closer to its target launch date in May as it has completed static fire tests on both stages just more than three weeks after Flight 3. This is significant progress compared to the time ahead of Flight 3, meaning one month after Flight 2, SpaceX began to test the flight hardware. I'm sure that they don't have a lot of homework for hardware anymore, and the only test away from Flight 4's readiness is a wet dress rehearsal. B-11 headed back to the barn on April 7 to install the hot staging ring and final checkout prior to going to the launch site again with 29, Based on the reality, I'm pretty confident that the wet dress rehearsal can be completed in two or three weeks from now or at the end of this month. But it does not mean that Flight 4 will happen in two or three weeks away. This is even more reasonable when in the April, for the company talk, Elon Musk also confirmed the possibility of Flight 4's launch date in a month or so from now. Yeah, Flight 4 is next month. Most likely indeed, we will see Starship roar in the sky again in the mid-May. Clearly, SpaceX has to spend about a few weeks on the job with the FAA. Keep in mind that SpaceX has not still yet completed its mishap investigation for Flight 3, which contains some items such as identifying what caused the loss of both stages and the improvements they want to make. Finally, the FAA has to check all of them off and confirm SpaceX to make all the corrective actions and receive a license modification. Nevertheless, the investigation's closure does not signal an immediate authorization of the next Starship launch.
Take, for example, to gear up for Flight 3. The FAA closed its mishap investigation for Flight 2 on February 26, but until March 13, it awarded a launch license for the mission. It means that the agency took about over two weeks to say, okay, such progress is considered quite slow, especially in the context of U.S. commercial space flights increasing rapidly in number and SpaceX also wants to accelerate Starship's flight cadence. The current FAA's way is to authorize the operator to conduct investigations though they oversee inquiries. The national agency relies on an operator-led approach because the agency does not have adequate resources for in-house investigation given highly specialized vehicle designs among companies. In-house mishap investigations would be an immense undertaking that would mean investigations would take 10 to 20 times longer. According to the 2012 GAO report, the Office of Commercial Space Transportation under the FAA should comprehensively evaluate the effectiveness of its mishap investigation process. A second recommendation calls for the FAA to define criteria for when an investigation should be led by the launch operator with FAA oversight or by the FAA itself. This results in another solution published by Kelvin Coleman, the FAA's Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation. Coleman unveiled a significant shift in the licensing process, heralding good news for both SpaceX and the aerospace industry. In particular, the FAA is working to move Starship license issuance to a different program where they approve a whole portfolio of launches at once. Instead of a single launch license as before, SpaceX can now conduct multiple Starship launches, eliminating the need for a separate license for each launch. Consequently, this streamlined process promises to simplify the FAA's workflow, reducing the time and resources allocated to licensing procedures. This transformative shift positions Starship operations to evolve from a nascent vehicle to a versatile workhorse akin to the current Falcon 9. While it's unclear whether this may be relevant to Fly 4 or not, it shows that the FAA is on the same side as SpaceX and they are working together to simplify paperwork and increase launch cadence. It can be said that this is nearly compulsory for the FAA because perhaps they are under pressure from other government agencies that are under a tight timeline who are relying on SpaceX. Once Starship comes online soon, Artemis 3's timeline also happen as planned. It obviously benefits NASA and Artemis's contractors. In addition, we cannot deny another important factor, safety. Something to keep in mind, the FAA is primarily basically only concerned with safety. SpaceX's track record, in addition to the improvement shown in the last few launches, could definitely lead me to believe they're more confident in the safety of the platform. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.